follow up the previous video about how to install the Blender pipeline from Lego Studio with a little addition. What if you want to make a custom sticker or a custom part? Well, what I'm going to do is do a very basic, arguably the most basic project you could do for our class. And as part of that, it will include a custom sticker. So I decided that my client is the Museum of the Earth. That's right here in Ithaca, New York, or I guess it's more towards Trumansburg, but just outside our town. And there are all kinds of fossils. Actually, if I wanted to, I could even search for fossils down here and get many of them. Okay, I have to sign in. So you might want to make a brick link account if you want to do that. So what I can do is pick one of these that I think is appropriate. All right, this is a short project at the beginning of our class. I'm not asking people to become skilled Lego designers in two weeks. Okay, so I decide that I really like this uh, Parasaur. So when I click on it and I say import, it is actually just going to import that directly into Lego Studio that will take a certain amount of time depending on how uh, how fancy and complicated the model is very nice model here all right but what I want to do for my custom set for my client is I've decided that the Museum of the Earth is the client so I want to put a little sign here that has the Museum of the Earth logo there how can I do that that's obviously not going to be included in Lego Studio well, if you look over the top, there is something up here called Part Designer. And when you do that, it's probably, oh, it started a second time, darn it. Okay, the first time you go to that, and I'll bring, show you it again. Here I go back to LEGO Studio. Okay, is you're going to go to this thing called Parts Designer under Tools. And that, the first time, will send you over to a website. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this thing. Okay, and it will ask you to install this program which is called Parts Designer. Okay, now Parts Designer, I wish it would put it in the same folder as everything else, but let's just take a quick look at my hard drive down here at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna sort these by name. So what it does is it puts Studio 2.0, that is there, but if I look up here, there it is, a separate directory called Parts Designer. I don't know why it's in a separate directory, but it is, and the application is in there, so you could drag that down if you're using it on a regular basis too. Okay, so anyway, Parts Designer installs into its own directory. So what I'm going to do is, when I start it up, is it starts this interface, which I seem to have going twice, it doesn't really matter. And when I say new, the first thing it's going to ask me is, do I want to make a minifigure, which is totally cool. Maybe you want to make a minifigure of a person. That's a totally legitimate project for this. I've been to San Diego Comic-Con. I witnessed a line that was literally over one mile long that by standing in the one mile long line, you got to press a button and one in three people won a minifigure. Okay, I want you to think about that that people were so desperate to get these things that I saw people waiting in a one mile long line, and I'm not exaggerating, in order to press a button with two thirds of them not getting anything. Okay, so a custom minifigure, cool. You wanna make an Ithaca one, a Quartica one, whatever. Okay, parts have already been done. Okay, now if you click parts, which I just did, it kind of gives you some of the basic ones. You see like a dish, you know, like a lot of times they'll use that for various things like Captain America's shield. And so basically if you say, and I'll do that again, let me show you this. So if I say file, new, okay, minifigure, follow those instructions. I'll do parts at first. A parts kind of guesses like, well, okay, I want a, um, you know, a one by eight brick and uh, here is where I click on, what do I want to put on it? Oh, I'll put the header. And notice that this, by the way, that thing I just shaped is about the right size. You have to think about the aspect ratio of this and does it fit on there? If I had something else, it wouldn't. Okay, but that's not really what Parts Designer is about. The really power in it is when you go a totally new part, start from scratch, and what I wanna do is make a sign. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one that's maybe like, I say, make a new brick. You have to start with a brick. What kind, flat, nope, this one. I'm gonna go across four wide and then I'm going to use the scale button when I select it I can click on it and I can use the scale button and scale it up so I click scale click that and now it's taller okay if I wanted to I could put a little cap on the top 
But here's the important part. Okay, once you get the brick, the shape you want, now you can just use a default minifigure. You can use a basic shape, but I also can make anything, right? If I want a brick that's 20 long and whatever, okay, even if Lego doesn't make it, you can find it there. Then when I'm done making the brick, the shape that I want, I go to decal and I click the decal button and it asks me to find it. Okay. So what I did in this case is I have a folder called Lego project and I made something in there called, uh, there it is. There's my logo as a PNG file. Now chances are, oh, there it is. It's wrong. It's the wrong direction. Oh man, that's annoying. Well, if I click this, it allows me to rotate it around. 90 degrees. See, there's 90. It even showed me. Do you see that? There's a little number there. There's exactly 90. Then when I'm ready to get this on the brick itself, okay, I can take that thing and I stick it there. Do you see that red line? That's where it wants to be. That saying is centered. I can scale it here to say, oh, actually, if I hold on shift, I think it'll scale it a little bit better. So I'm going to scale that down so it fits on the brick. Move it up like that. And then when I am happy with it, I hit the check mark and it is on that brick. Notice the transparency reads as transparency. That's why knowing what an alpha channel is is important. All right, I'm done. I've got my museum of the brick. Maybe it's not the greatest sign in the world, but it gets you get the point. Okay, when I'm done, guess what I'm going to do? I click export to studio and it asks me what I want to call it. M of the earth sign. Sounds good, and I'll call it M-O-T-E sign. So, and I'm naming them, okay? The uh, parts number, man, if you know that, I have to tip my hat to you, okay? And I probably should have selected it. Is it, ah, oh, you dinkus, you didn't select it. So I gotta click on it, then I gotta say export to studio, and that's the name of the earth sign. And here, I'm also gonna call, I'm gonna keep that dot dot, that's important to me, M-O-T-E dot that, and I say export. And so what that's gonna do, and it says, oh, it's under Lego Studio. Oh, okay, that sounds cool. I just hit okay. And now when I go over to Lego Studio, here it is, oh man, there it is. Look, and if you can't find it, okay, look, we have, it's gonna start with the main parts, all the parts here, alphabetical order, but what I wanna do is I'm gonna go to custom parts. And custom parts is where anything you make in the brick designer will be. And I can drop that there. And I can now have my dinosaur with my Museum of the Earth sign. Okay, very cool. Now, um, and so now there you go. Okay, so that is adding a custom part. So again, you're going to add parts designer. You're going to install parts designer. You can do three things in parts designer. You can make a new minifigure that's going to allow you to put PNGs on there. You can make a part that's kind of like pre-existing ones that are kind of expected to have stickers. Or if you're really ambitious, you want to do something that's a little bit unusual, put a sticker on a part that you never thought of, whatever, that's where you start from scratch. This will also allow you to put 3D modeled shapes in there if you're trying to make uh, your own Lego, whatever. But at the same time, just to warn you, that is a little bit more intense and we'll get into that later. Okay, so anyway, so these are the three ways to put stickers on. You load the sticker app with the decal button, and when you're finished, you export it to Studio, and it will be found in your custom parts right here. All right, well, good luck, and let me know if you have any problems.